Behind every event is necessity. Behind every accident is purpose. Leo Tolstoy Many thinkers believe that nothing happens by chance, and everything has a definite purpose and destiny. This idea goes back as far as Aristotle, who distinguished four causes of all things, material, formal, acting, and purposeful. Purposeful cause, or final cause, according to Aristotle, is that for the sake of which a thing exists, the purpose of its existence. For example, the purpose of a saw is to cut a board. Teleological, that is purposeful view of the world, was also characteristic of medieval philosophy, in particular, Thomas Aquinas, who believed that God created the world for the realization of certain goals. Every object has its own purpose in the divine plan of the universe. At the same time, doubts about the expediency of the world appeared in New Age philosophy. Descartes expressed the idea that the laws of nature are random, and David Hume rejected purposive causes as illusory. Modern science also tends to favor the idea that many phenomena arise spontaneously, without a definite purpose. Nevertheless, the idea that there are underlying patterns and purposes in the world continues to preoccupy the human mind. Perhaps the search for ultimate goals and meanings is an eternal need of man, striving to unravel the mystery of existence? Or is the world really organized intelligently and has some higher purpose that we have yet to comprehend? There is only one true luxury, the luxury of human companionship. No wealth in the world can help you if you have no purpose. William Somerset Purpose is what a person strives for, some end point of his efforts and activities. The question of purpose is of fundamental philosophical importance, for the whole meaning of our existence depends on what we think of as purpose. Throughout the history of philosophy, many variants of understanding the goal have been proposed. The ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle believed that the highest human goal is eudaimonia, that is happiness and well-being. From his point of view, all human efforts should be directed towards achieving a happy and virtuous life. In the Christian tradition, the highest goal is seen in post-mortem salvation and the attainment of eternal life. According to Blessed Augustine, earthly existence is only a preparation of the soul for eternity, so all deeds and thoughts should be oriented towards the afterlife. During the Age of Enlightenment, the goal was called progress and perfection of the human race through reason. Thinkers such as Condorcet believed that through science and education, society could continuously improve. Utilitarians, led by Jeremiah Bentham, believed that the purpose of all actions and social institutions was to maximize happiness and minimize suffering. In their view, the goal should be to achieve the greatest happiness for the greatest number of people. For existentialists such as Jean-Paul Sartre, purpose is determined by the free choice of the individual himself. Since existence precedes essence, there is no basis for a universal goal, and everyone chooses one for himself. Modern research in positive psychology, such as the work of Martin Seligman, shows that having meaning and purpose in life leads to greater happiness and fulfillment. While there is no single purpose for everyone, it is important to find something worth living for for each individual. Society is a prison of the mind. To break out of it, one must define one's own purpose in life. Miguel de Unamuno Whether a person can define his or her own purpose in life, or whether it is set from the outside by society and culture. On the one hand, many philosophers, such as Jean-Paul Sartre, have argued that man is doomed to freedom. He comes into this world without a predetermined essence, and must construct the meaning of his existence through his choices and actions. Sartre said, Existence precedes essence. That is, we exist first, and then we define who we are. On the other hand, many sociologists and philosophers emphasize the influence of society and culture on the formation of personality and its values. For example, Karl Marx believed that social existence determines consciousness. Our ideas and goals are largely set by socio-economic conditions. And sociologist Emile Durkheim wrote about collective consciousness, which imposes a way of thinking and acting on an individual. Perhaps the truth is somewhere in the middle. Man cannot completely abstract himself from the culture and era in which he lives. But at the same time, he has a certain freedom of choice, whether to accept the values of the majority or to seek his own way. Albert Camus in his essay, The Myth of Sisyphus, 
wrote about man's rebellion against the absurdity of existence by searching for personal meaning. In the end, perhaps everyone is somewhere on the continuum between total submission to society and absolute freedom. And the question is to what extent we realize and use our freedom of choice given to us in this world. How ready are we to take responsibility for finding and realizing our purpose? That choice is up to each individual. To find oneself is the main purpose of human life. Eric Fromm Initially Anna is a successful aristocrat, wife of an influential official Karenin, mother of a son. But outwardly prosperous life does not bring her inner satisfaction. She feels as if she is in a cage, feels that her life is devoid of genuine emotion and meaning. Meeting Vronsky opens up for Anna the possibility of a different existence. She is ready to go against all rules for the sake of love, seeing in it the meaning of life. However, over time Anna realizes that this relationship has also turned out to be a disappointment. Vronsky finds himself unable to understand her spiritual quest. The relationship turns into a routine. Anna feels even more lonely than before. She is tormented by jealousy and fear of losing Vronsky's love. Gradually, Anna comes to the idea that the true meaning can be found neither in family life nor in a love affair. True happiness is spiritual harmony, which she was never able to find. Anna's tragedy is that her search for meaning was unsuccessful. This is how Leo Tolstoy shows the difficult path of man to find the true meaning of existence. Anna's story is a warning about the futility of chasing after phantom happiness outside oneself. The writer calls for moral self-improvement and service to high ideals. We think that having reached the goal, we will find happiness. But on reaching the goal, we realize that happiness was in the journey itself. Robert James Waller Many people believe that reaching the goal they have been striving for will bring them happiness and fulfillment. As Aristotle wrote, the goal of human life is happiness. Setting goals and realizing them provides a sense of direction and meaningfulness to life. However, existentialist philosophers such as Jean-Paul Sartre argued that achieving a goal can only lead to temporary satisfaction. In their view, true happiness cannot be found through external goals. It lies in a person's inner freedom and conscious choice. Indeed, psychologists note the goal attainment syndrome, when, after much effort, a person achieves a goal but does not feel deep satisfaction and happiness. Perhaps this is due to the fact that in the process of moving towards the goal, a person gets more pleasure than from the fact of achievement itself. It is also important to note the difference between external and internal goals. External goals, for example, career, money, fame, cannot bring deep happiness if they are not aligned with a person's inner aspirations. As Eric Fromm wrote, true happiness comes from being, not having. Thus, the answer is ambiguous. Goals can give meaning to life, but achieving them does not guarantee true happiness. It is important to find one's true calling and follow it. As Nietzsche believed, whoever knows how to want something will experience the sweetest of all joys, the joy of achievement. But it is necessary to want correctly and wisely. Do you agree that goals and happiness are not always directly connected? And how do you understand true happiness in your life? Humanity is united and whole only in the ideal. In reality, it is split and disunited. Nikolai Berdyaev The search for a common goal for all mankind is a very complex and multifaceted issue. On the one hand, people have much in common. We all strive for happiness, health, safety. But at the same time, each culture and nation has its own values and priorities. One of the main difficulties in finding a common goal is the difference in economic development between countries and regions. Rich countries strive for comfort and abundance, while poor countries strive for survival and overcoming poverty. For example, the famous economist Jeffrey Sachs proposed to make the eradication of extreme poverty by 2025 a common goal. But even this noble idea did not find unanimous support. Another obstacle is different political systems and ideologies. What seems good to Western democracies may not be what authoritarian regimes or theocracies envision. Cultural and religious differences also complicate the search for a common goal. For example, the Muslim world is characterized by different values and ideals than the secular West. Generational differences should also be taken into account. Ecology, equality, and self-actualization are important to young people. 
The older generation values stability and tradition more. Nevertheless, there are encouraging examples. In 2015, the UN adopted the Sustainable Development Goals, which were supported by almost all countries. This shows that humanity can identify common reference points if it wants to. Perhaps the common goal lies not in specific targets, but in the pursuit of peace, justice and respect for human rights. Is this not the true humanism to which humanity must aspire? Every element of reality has a spontaneity based on the purposiveness that lies in its nature. Alfred North Whitehead Can molecules and atoms have any purpose and intention, or is their behavior completely determined by physical laws? On the one hand, modern science views molecules and atoms as objects subject to the laws of physics and chemistry. Their motion, interactions and reactions are described by the equations of quantum mechanics and thermodynamics. This view proceeds from the principle of reductionism, according to which all phenomena in the world can be explained on the basis of fundamental physical interactions. On the other hand, some philosophers, such as Alfred North Whitehead, believed that even at the level of elementary particles, there is some form of purposiveness. The elements of matter strive to self-organize and manifest their potential. This idea echoes the concept of entelechy in Aristotle's philosophy. It is interesting that recently, theories developing the idea of purposefulness at the quantum level have appeared. For example, physicist John Joper put forward a hypothesis about active information controlling quantum processes. According to this hypothesis, elementary particles can choose how to behave in this or that situation. Perhaps in time, science will come closer to understanding the nature of goal setting in the microcosm. In the meantime, the question remains open and fascinating. Isn't the very ability of humans to ask such questions a manifestation of the deeper purposefulness of the universe? I am convinced that the old man does not play dice. Albert Einstein the question of whether the laws of physics and physical constants have any purpose or purpose is one of the eternal questions that preoccupy the minds of philosophers and scientists. We can view the laws of physics as simply describing how our universe works at a fundamental level. For example, the law of universal gravitation describes how bodies affect each other, but has no higher purpose. This view comes from a position of scientific realism and philosophical naturalism. Many scientists and philosophers, Paul Davies, John Barrow, Freeman Dyson, have pointed out that physical constants have a very precise, seemingly fitted meaning. Small deviations would lead to the impossibility of complex structures, including life. This suggests some sort of purpose for the laws of physics. In particular, the idea of the anthropic principle is that physical laws must allow for the emergence of an observer capable of studying these laws. In essence, the universe is, as it were, customized for reason. This philosophical direction does not yet find support in modern science, but continues to be discussed. Thus, the question of the purpose of the laws of nature remains open. Perhaps, in time, new discoveries will shed light on this mystery and lift the veil on the deeper meaning of the structure of our universe. In the meantime, everyone is free to seek his own answers in this. Everything strives for some purpose. Aristotle. From the point of view of scientific materialism, the universe has no predetermined purpose. It came into existence as a result of the Big Bang for purely physical reasons and continues to expand according to the laws of physics. In this view, the universe is devoid of any meaning, and it is up to man himself to give meaning to his existence. On the other hand, religious and idealistic philosophical systems often ascribe a purpose to the universe. For example, the realization of God's plan, or the achievement of some perfect state. The teleological view sees the world as moving toward a final goal. Some philosophers have tried to reconcile these approaches. For example, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin believed that the universe is moving toward the omega point, the ultimate unity and realization. And Alfred North Whitehead saw the goal as the realization of the inner potential of all entities. It is still unclear whether it is possible to speak of a single purpose for the unique and diverse phenomenon that is our universe. Perhaps everyone should find the answer to this question by looking into his or her own philosophical and metaphysical intuitions.